What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Exact IT and Cybersecurity YouTube channel. I am Brian, your cybersecurity expert. And today, we're going to talk about how long it takes a company to recover from a cyber attack, or more specifically, a ransomware attack, on the heels of two major cyber attacks here in the US this week Crown Equipment and CDK, which thank you everyone for your support. Our videos around those two incidents have done very well. We've gotten a ton of comments, and that's why I'm doing this video today to educate everyone on how long does it take a company to recover from a ransomware attack or cyber attack. And let's dig into it. According to a report by IBM, the average time to identify and contain a breach in 2023 was 287 days. It takes 204 days for a company to identify that they even have an attacker or cyber criminal in their network and another 73 days to contain that breach. That's how we get to 287 days, so almost a year. Year. It can be quicker in a lot of cases it is, but in other cases they're there for a very long time. We know of cases where hackers were on the network for years before it was found out that they were there. Why this is important, number one, is because this impacts how long a company can be down, right? If a cyber criminal has time to plan out his attack, just like if you think about this in any situation, if you have time to think things through and plan them out, you can typically be more successful or do more damage. It's no different here with cyber criminals. The more time you give them to see how your network's constructed, to see what you have, maybe find financial information about your revenues, where they use that when they ask you for things like ransomware payments. We've been involved in ransomware investigations where we knew the cyber criminals had gotten the cyber insurance policies and knew exactly what their coverages were. And funny enough, when you start negotiating with those ransomware cyber criminals, they ask for that exact number or they know what your deductible is and they start playing the numbers game around around those numbers. Not a good situation to be in if they have this information and they use it as leverage in their negotiation tactics when they have inside information that you don't realize that they have. It makes it a lot harder for ransomware negotiators to do what they need to do and get that ransom payment down to a level to where it may be considered that they would pay, which is a bad idea. Don't pay the ransom. So that's just one set of data that we have from IBM regarding like how long it takes to find a cyber criminal. That's not how long companies are down. The actual down time for operations can vary widely. The actual downtime from a ransomware attack is around 22 days, according to a report by a company named Coveware. But some companies have been known to be down for months due to things like the complexity and severity of the attack. For example, a company called Norsk Hydro, they're a major aluminum producer. They were significantly disruptive for several weeks in 2019 to a ransomware attack. What are some things that impact companies from being down longer than others? Based on cyber attacks that we have analyzed, a big factor is the size and complexity of the organization. The bigger it is, typically the longer they're down. At the end of the day, companies, in my opinion, they should not have networks where everything can go down from one cyber criminal or one group or one attack. There's very easy ways to do things like network segmentation that you can implement that will help your whole entire company from going down where it only impacts little pockets here and there and doesn't disrupt the whole entire company. The other factor here is, is the type of attack. Ransomware attacks can cause prolonged downtime if things like backups are not available, if the decryption software or the ransomware group that you're dealing with has not good software, that's a thing. That can slow down the recovery process if you pay the ransom or if you happen to get the decryption keys because now you're dependent on the software to unencrypt those files so they're usable again and that takes some time, unfortunately. Companies that don't have an incident response plan never practiced an incident response plan and they will have a harder time getting back up and running than others. Companies that have well-defined tested incident response plans can recover more quickly and it's been proven over and over again. An organization's cybersecurity posture. When I come on this channel and I say this company was not prepared, they are not doing enough, and I'm, you go in the comment section and blast me saying you don't know what you're talking about. Look, I do know what I'm talking about. I've analyzed and been involved with thousands of ransomware attacks. I know what it looks like when a company is prepared and when a company's not. The evidence is clear to me. So unfortunately, yes, I might have that insight that you don't have because I have a lot of experience with this stuff. And when I see a company struggling to get through a response, it tells me they don't have a really good incident response plan. When their employees run to the internet and tell the world what the heck is going on inside their company, they don't have a good incident response plan. It's not the definition of a good incident response plan. It's exactly what you don't want to happen when you're 
you're in the middle of a ransomware attack. And then the last big thing that we see why companies really struggle to get back on their feet after a ransomware attack is that they just don't have good backups. They don't have a good backup plan. This usually goes hand in hand with the incident response plan because if you're gonna spend time on an incident response plan, you better make sure that your business continuity tools and the things you need to get yourself back up and running quickly without needing to pay a ransom or considering to pay a ransom are these backups. And that's what we usually see. We usually see companies forced to pay the ransom because they find out during the event that their backups weren't good enough or they just won't get them restored back to a point where the business can survive. Meaning like the closest backup they have could take them back six months or more. Big businesses can't take on that. They need to make sure that their backups are available and that when they do need to restore them that they actually work. And this is part of making sure you have a good cyber resiliency plan in place. So let's take a look at some examples of some companies who were hit with ransomware over the years and what their situation looked like in terms of how long it took them to get back up and running. So in 2017, we had the shipping giant Maersk was hit by the NotPetya ransomware. And despite a massive disruption to their operation, they were able to recover in just about 10 days. And their success was largely to the fact that they had a strong incident response plan, but they also had a little bit of stroke of luck. Funny thing was, is they had network segmentation by mistake. And that happened because they actually had a server down in Ghana that the hackers didn't touch. And the luckiness that they had that, and they were very lucky to have that, that played into the fact that they were able to get things back up and restored and get back on their feet in 10 days, which usually companies aren't that lucky. And we also have this uh, Carlson wagon lit travel in 2020. CWT faced a ransomware attack, but managed to recover quickly by negotiating and paying the ransom. So that's another way you can get back up and running quickly. You can pay the ransom. While this approach is not recommended by us or any other company, sometimes it's all you have to regain access to your company and continuing to do business. Then we have the Kronos hack. And Kronos is an example of a company that took a long time to get back up and running. So in December 21, this major payroll company suffered a ransomware attack that severely impacted their private cloud. The recovery process extended well past January of 2022. This organization was down and they were not able to give their customers access to their platform, which was the platform that tens of thousands of businesses use to run payroll and things like that in their business and run HR in their business. Not unlike what we're seeing with CDK right now in the automotive industry, where that software being down, that SaaS application being down is impacting tens of thousands of businesses around the world. And speaking of a company that impacted tens of thousands of businesses, another company in my industry in 2001, Kaseya, also got hit with a major ransomware attack. They were able to get back up and running quickly through a little bit of stroke of good luck here as their IT management solution that is used by tens of thousands of IT companies, if not hundreds of thousands of IT companies at the time, it impacted a lot of IT companies and their customers with things like ransomware. Well, the FBI somehow magically was able to get the decryption keys for this event and that got Kaseya out of hot water and really avoided a potentially bad situation for that company and this industry. Those things can happen. We don't know what's gonna happen with these current ransomware attacks that are going on. We don't know if somebody's gonna pay the ransom. We don't know if the FBI could get involved and provide keys in some way, but those things can speed up the process of these companies coming back online sooner than a few weeks. But I will caution you, if none of those things come into play, we're probably looking at three weeks or more for both CDK and Crown to be dead. As a certified cyber resilience professional through the Disaster Recovery Institute, I can tell you that these examples underscore the importance of having a solid resilience plan and a resilience plan typically includes these things. You want to make sure that your backups are regular and that they work and that they're air gapped separate from the main network. It's very important. If you want to recover quickly and you don't want to have to pay the ransom, that is the most important thing that you should be focusing on and making sure is available to you as part of your incident response plan. A well-documented and tested incident response plan. It means things like who needs to be communicated to, who's going to make decisions. We use a thing here in our company that's very effective that helps companies quickly identify who should be the right person and who should be contacted when certain events happen. We help companies build incident response plans all the time. And making sure that you document everything, consider everything, and consider things like when a big piece of your business operation relies on a cloud application or a software application and 
that's not available to you, that has to be part of your incident response plan. And a good incident response plan and a company that helps you build one will help you consider these things and help you figure out backup plans should those things not be available to you. Now, you, it might be that your backup plan goes to pen and paper, just like everybody's doing today, but at least you'll be prepared and ready for it and you'll have those things in place. And you have time to train your employees. If this does happen, here's what it's gonna look like for you. Here's how you're going to handle it. The other thing you wanna do is make sure you have continuous employee training on these best practices. I just mentioned it. You're gonna to wanna to figure out what you need to do and then train your employees on it because the more your employees know, the less panic there is and the less chance that they're gonna to run to the internet and complain about it on Reddit and X. Investment in advanced cybersecurity tools and technologies. I get hammered for this on my channel. You people complain to me all the time about the fact that I'm sitting here saying companies aren't doing enough. Well, like I said, I can tell you, I can sit here and read an article, look at a situation, hear a report, listen to a CEO, listen to a colleague, then tell me a situation about a company. And I can tell you exactly where they're at with their cyber maturity and where they are within their process with maturing their cybersecurity. Unfortunately, I believe, it's my opinion, that most companies in the United States are completely ill-prepared for a cyber attack. And these billion dollar companies that people believe are spending tons of money on cybersecurity, I'm here to tell you they are not. They're not investing in this stuff. That's why they keep getting hacked. That's why your information keeps getting exposed on the dark web to cyber criminals. And people need to start holding these companies' feet to the fire who are not investing in proper cybersecurity. Just because because a company makes billions and billions of dollars does not mean they have good cybersecurity. They're not mutually exclusive. And finally, get regular cybersecurity assessments because we have so many vulnerabilities coming out every single day because the people who make hardware and software still put out products that are chock full of vulnerabilities. That's just the world we live in. You need to be checking for these things and making sure that your systems don't have them because quite frankly, yes, if you are checking for that and you're investing in other cybersecurity tools, if there's vulnerabilities in the network, all of those tools and, and whatnot can be circumvented more than likely by a really good cyber criminal. Mitigating those vulnerabilities, getting them down to near zero should be the goal of your company. And really, if you do that, the chances of you needing to kick in that incident response plan one day go down dramatically, but it's never going to be erased completely. So that's why you have to do all of these things. So when I assess a company and I see that, well, yeah, they have incident response plans, they have backups, but their protection, the things they're doing to protect their critical information are not that great. They're doing one thing, they're doing two things. There are many layers you need to protect and many kind of force fields you can put up that hackers have to get through. And if you put up one or two, they're gonna get through them. But if you put up five, six, or seven, which is what we recommend by following the cybersecurity framework, that's how you stop these cyber criminals today and they move on to easier targets. But at the end of the day, when there are are no more easy targets, all this stuff that I'm talking about goes away. And that's a day I would love to see. In conclusion, the duration and downtime of a cyber attack can vary greatly on several factors, which I covered here in the video today. I hope it was informative. If it was, please like the video, share this out to your friends and family. But having a solid cyber resilience plan is crucial. Getting through this event, it can be tremendously easier if you do the simple things that I mentioned in this video. And companies that invest in this in the future are gonna win. They're gonna retain customers. They're gonna gain new customers because these companies that don't think this is serious and don't take this seriously, the world's had enough. They're tired of it. They're gonna stop doing business with you. They're gonna move elsewhere unless they have no other option. So I'm Brian from Exact Cybersecurity and IT. If you need any help with any of this stuff, folks, please, there's plenty of links down below where we offer free resources. You can reach out to our team for help. Whatever you need, it's down below in the description. We just passed 4,000 subscribers. I appreciate everything everyone's support. I never thought we would ever have this much of an audience for something as crazy as cybersecurity. But we appreciate everybody's support and positive comments down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Stay safe out there.